In this video about the development of my granule extruder I would like to report on setbacks, solutions and ideas that still need to be implemented. According to my original planning, the Bruiser Mark IV should have already been converted. But as is almost always the case when developing new technologies, practice differs from your personal theory you came up with. The stumbling block in my development work came in the form of a bag of PLA powder which was obtained from pellets using an industrial grinder. This finer powder should be easier to process than the raw material I have previously obtained from failed prints, but that thought was wrong. To err is human, to insist on errors is the devil. So it was necessary to face the facts and go back to the virtual drawing board in order to adapt the extruder to real physics. Sometimes this process has to repeat it several times as can be seen in the mountain of rework parts to the right of the printer. Finer powder has fundamentally different properties than coarser powder. Problem number one. The stuff when loose trickles through narrow openings just as well as coarser granules. However, if the container is shaken a little, the finer powder compacts more than the coarser one. The finer grains get caught in such a way that the flowability is no longer granted. In the printer's current, a bit too tight supply path, the powder flows so badly that I have to help with the wire from time to time while printing, which undoubtedly has a negative impact on the print quality. It is therefore important to redesign the path from the storage container to the extruder with larger openings. While speaking of storage containers... In order to keep the moving mass of the printhead small, a storage container is usually implemented that delivers raw material to the extruder when required. This happens either by gravity via a container at the top of the frame or actively using compressed air or a screw conveyor from a container that can be attached anywhere. In both cases, the material is usually forwarded via a flexible hose. I don't find this solution optimal and therefore use rigid pipes for the material supply. Pivot points are on the frame and the printhead. The variation in length is compensated for by two pipes that fit into one another. In the final version, the upper pivot point is not attached to the frame as shown here, but to the Z axis, so that it moves up with the printhead. A flexible hose, as is usually used, swings around uncontrollably, whereas the rigid feed makes predictable movements and what is predictable can be calculated by software. The key word for this is input shaping. Feeding from the rear is also anything but common practice, but it has a clear advantage. With the feed at the front of the extruder, the lever from the feed attachment point to the attachment point on the X axis is longer, which causes the printhead to oscillate more. The converted bruiser should not only print with low speeds, but also work at full acceleration. Problem number 2 with the finer powder is the higher friction in the extruder tube. Many small grains have a larger surface area than a few coarse grains, which results in that higher friction. The effect was so great that extruder version 5.0 simply didn't work with the powder. Neither using higher gear ratio of 13 to 1, nor purchasing higher torque stepper motors resulted in a reliably working extruder. The higher torque only caused damage to the plastic parts of the water cooling system. So the extruder tube was redesigned, again. Version 5.1 is even shorter and the water cooling has been made more efficient. 
The extruder tube is thin soldered to 1.5mm sheet steel, which on the one hand absorbs the torque better and on the other hand increases the cooling performance. The heat barrier now consists of a stainless steel tube with 7mm inner and 8mm outer diameter. The inner diameter of the extruder tube widens from the cold to the hot end, which reduces friction a little. At least with a 0.6mm nozzle, the powder can now be printed reliably. To improve print quality, as already mentioned, the material path must be optimized. The powder must be loose and evenly distributed at the extruder inlet. The improvised stirrer consists of a piece of wire on the coupling. As you can see, all 3D printed plastic parts of the Prusa Mark IV's X-axis have been redesigned. The aim was to create a larger distance between the two round rods on which the print head is guided. The extruder is longer and heavier than the original print head and with more space between the rods, the forces are absorbed with less bending. However, the parts need to be revised again. The now installed, larger stepper motor with the 5.1 gearbox sits higher than the previously used motor and the extruder tube of version 5.1 has become shorter. The attachment points must therefore be changed. At the moment, the attachment of the timing belt is also suboptimal. The corresponding points have to be adjusted so that it runs parallel to the round rods. The attachment of the cable and the additional board called love board should also be made more sturdy. Since the set travel is only about 180mm after the conversion, I had to adapt the firmware. While many manufacturers only upload lines of code to a server and then advertise their printers as open source devices, Prusa goes the whole way and publishes detailed documentation on how the source code can be compiled. Setting up the appropriate development environment simply consisted of installing a few Python components and, together with reading the source code, the adjustment was completed in one day. However, it may be possible to redesign the set axis so that the full 220mm print height is retained. Implementing a different force sensor also turned out to be trickier than expected. Also, the 1kg sensor I use is recognized by the firmware, the measured values are too different than that it works in operation. Plan A means further adjustments to the firmware, Plan B consists of additional electronics that simulate the original sensor. Future will tell what works best. As I said, the extruder now works with the powder, but there is still a lot to improve. It cannot be overlooked that the part cooling fan was quickly adapted using a piece of a tin can. In order to be able to make the step from handmade extruder parts to CNC manufactured components, I received a PowerCore V2 from Rec Robotics. Many thanks to my anonymous sponsor. So back to the computer and hopefully you will see more and better print examples soon. In addition to the build instructions and further information about the project, there is also a donate button on my pages. Many thanks to all the great people who have already sent me monetary support for my work on this open hardware granule extruder. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.